Human beings naturally have addictive personalities. The elites know this, so they play on us. This is how they are able to manipulate us and keep us going in a specific path that they want by putting out things that draw in our conscious, our focus conscious into uh, different addictions, whether it be gambling or sports or whatever. Fear is the number one form of manipulation. In other words, with fear, I can make you do anything. First, I create the fear, and then I present the solution for the fear. Now I'm your puppeteer. I can make you, I can pull all your strings and I can literally make you do whatever I want. That's what I pump fear 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's like, you know, 12 years ago, I just disconnected TV. I said, forget about it. No need to look at TV anymore. I think we have to find a balance because we are living in the matrix. And because of that, there's a financial matrix, there's a systematic matrix. And the financial matrix right now, unfortunately, dominates this planet. And because things like being in this hotel cost money, they're not gonna just let us come in here and be in this hotel for free. So we have to see money as an energy exchange versus a monetary system. And we have to understand from a different perspective that we're us, utilizing this thing to exchange our energies and the energy exchange here is for us to be able to sit and talk about this stuff in this room. So we've exchanged that linking currency piece for this. But at the same time, we have to also take care of our emotional because if you get on an airplane, the first thing they tell you before the airplane takes off is if, you know, if we have a catastrophe or a situation and the mask comes down, make sure you get the oxygen first before you help somebody else. And the biggest problem that we have right now is we're always looking to help somebody else before we're even able to help them. Sometimes we've got to take a break. Now, of course, we, won't, we don't want to stop helping people. But sometimes we have to take a break and we have to get ourselves right on the inside. We have to get that oxygen mask sometimes, strengthen ourselves so that we can help other people the right way. Sometimes we're limping to help them or we're in a situation where we can't even help them because we're so weak and we're trying to get somebody else to do something that we aren't even able to do ourselves yet. But I mean, that's not, it's not saying we don't try, but you, we've got to spend time, good mindfulness time on ourselves. I think that's so important. Consciousness and feelings are interwoven, but they're directly also affected by epigenetic memories epigenetic memories and memories in the DNA. So epigenetic memories are memories that are stored in your genes from ancestors. This is already, again, real science, peer-reviewed science. So if you go back 15 generations, the memories of your ancestors 15 generations ago are inside of your body. And they directly affect and interfere with your hormonal system, your thought process, and your emotions that you're currently having at the moment. They can also collide with those ancient memories and those ancient emotions and it can cause you to have PTSD or it can cause you to be ex ex exuberantly happy. It just depends. Uh, some people on this planet are suffering from PTSD and depression based off of epigenetic memories that are still inside of their body affecting their emotional uh, state. To fix this problem, and it, it is fixable, because science, again, I love backing things by real science, has proven that within 21 days, saying positive affirmations about yourself out loud every single day for 21 days, you can change your DNA, you can rewire yourself. So if we've got this epigenetic memory situation where people are becoming internally sick from ancient ancestor uh, you know, turmoil, all you have to do is begin to say positive affirmations, begin to do meditations, eat energetic foods, and also operate in unconditional love. That will shorten that process. So the next generation will then, they'll have less epigenetic memories. And if you teach that generation, the next one will have less. So instead of 15 to 18 years, we can get it down maybe to only four or five years, but it takes a, a team effort. You know, Foth himself, uh, which is really the gentleman that uh, authored the tablets, he claimed to have authored them himself. He didn't use a scribe. When a lot of these ancient gods or demigods, you wouldn't use a scribe, he did it himself. And he talks a lot about the fact that um, mankind lives in this great cycle of rise and fall and that we fall into darkness. And he said, but the human being, the spirit that we have in our avatar bodies is so incredible and so powerful, we have the capability of rising not only to higher levels of consciousness, but even above his own and doing things even greater than he's able to do. He talks about being able to utilize his consciousness to travel to other planets and watch civilizations rise and fall. And he talks about all the different civilizations that he's seen and he literally says that oh, you have to focus on the light. When, you're in, when, you, when you fall into darkness, focus on the light and seek the light. And what he's trying to say is, find the good in things, learn your lessons from the darkness, and then keep taking a step forward back into the light because light is our birthright. And light is the higher level of consciousness, ascended master, adept initiates, you know, learning from, the, learning from your past and building a better future. And uh, also he talks a lot about unconditional love for not only yourself, but other people uh, in, in the universe. 
and that will give you the higher level of sentient consciousness that takes you to the next level and takes can take our entire civilization to the next level technologically and spiritually i was talking last night about the fact that the human body is so incredible and the way that our torus field which is our energy field that comes out extends from our body through our heart and around our body it also allows this magnetic field that allows our DNA to send and receive information wirelessly. Again, real peer-reviewed science. We can upload and download directly from our DNA. When you're walking through a room full of people, you literally have the capability of transmitting out positive energy into their fields, and when it goes down into their core, change the way that they feel and change the way that they even think. Just by walking through a room with the right mindset and the right energy inside of your body, and vice versa. If you're walking through dark, dim, and, and, you know, and you're emitting a lot of cortisol and everything else because you're, you're feeling a low vibration, you can also have a, a negative effect. So I tell people, be mindful even walking through a room because you can change the whole energy in a room just by walking into it with the right mindset. Sacred geometry is very important uh, to all of this dealing with energy, matter, sentience, consciousness, divine energy and all this because sacred geometry is a fundamental basis structure of the ether of space-time itself. So at every, every point in uh, space-time, or every Planck unit in space-time, which is the smallest measurement of distance, you have something called a flower of life. And the flower of life has intersecting circles, and these intersecting circles create something called the Vesica Pisces. The Vesica Pisces emanates out pure divine energy flow from the universal consciousness 24 hours a day, seven days a week, at all points in space-time. Now within this flower of life, which is a sacred geometrical, geometrical structure, you have uh, the Metatron's cube, which is a four-dimensional hypercube. And inside of that, you have something called the Vesica Pisces. Uh, and then in that, you have the 64-grid tetrahedron. As we go one more level down, you have something called the Vector Equilibrium. Now the Vector Equilibrium is the centralized point inside the flower of life that gives you access to zero-point energy, that gives you access to spiritual energy, that powers every single cell in your body and everything in the entire universe. All energy comes from that one source, but it's everywhere. It's flowing in us, through us, and out of us at all points in space-time. As a matter of fact, you, every person has 0 0.07 millivolts of electricity per cell in their body. 35 million cells are in your body. You, over, you have over 2.65 trillion volts of electricity in one human body. That's how powerful we are. Human beings are extremely, extremely incredible the way that our avatar bodies or structure are set up, the way that we're able to download information directly from space-time, and the way that we have all this energy inside of our body. That's what Qigong is all about, and Reiki healing is all about manipulating the energy centers in our body. The energy and the power is already in us. I would tell them to understand this, that the same divine energy that created everything that we see in the third dimension is the same exact divine energy in every single atom in their body, and they have billions of atoms. So the power is already in them, and the only thing they need to do to access it is command it. Stop begging and hoping and wishing for things to change and start commanding change in your life. It's a different mindset. The universe only understands power with power. It doesn't understand weakness. When you go weak, it just goes on, falls on deaf ears. All these trillions of prayers that go up every single day all around the globe from all 7.5 billion people, because 85.9% 85 of people are religious, doesn't really have a direct effect. Why? Prayer does work if you know how to pray. So the people who are feeling worthless and low and everything else, you have to understand the power is in you. Stop begging and hoping and wishing for something to happen. That is a low frequency mindset. I can take a, a cap, put it on your head with electrodes, connect it to a computer and tell you to beg, tell you to wish and hope and watch the frequency line low. Now put, do it again, command. When you want to get to a destination safely, I command I make it to my destination safely. Not please help me make it safely, please help me get there. You want to take care of a situation, you, have, you, can't, you can't make your car payment, don't, please, I need to pay my car, they're gonna take my car, no. I command that all my needs be met in a timely fashion. It's a different way of understanding how prayer works. It's how they do it in the East. It's understanding that the completion of before completion, understanding is already done before it's done. That's the way you're supposed to pray, with power and energy. And if you change that mindset, then you'll, you'll find out how powerful you really are. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.